yeah. <laughs> about uh, the software R. Okay. Lots of questions about, I don't know about lots, but there will definitely be questions about correlation coefficient R. Yes? Um, what will you have from before the minute? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have from before the midterm. Oh, Ooh, that's a really good question. But I don't, I don't, the answer is I don't know. I haven't, I haven't finished writing your test, <laughs> so. Um, is it gonna be like basic stuff? <laughs> I imagine <laughs> basic stuff. Well, Tell things that I think are basic stuff, <laughs> like. That doesn't help. Right. I know. I know. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna ask. rats were treated with an antibiotic, 16 rats were not, and then, then we measured some procombrin time, I don't even know what that is, but it was in the book. Okay. Does anyone know what that is? What? Blood, clotting blood clotting factor time? Okay, so that's how long it takes for a blood clot to form? Okay, so that's 
So we, uh, we measured that, and then we want to see, you know, is there a difference in how long this thing takes, okay? All right, so this is what our data shows. Our data says, okay, so we have the, an the antibiotic group and the control group, and there were um, 16 rats in each one, and the, the mean time was 24.6 versus 20.2, and then the standard deviation was 8.1 versus 12.2. Okay. All right, so uh, in this case, our null hypothesis is that the two means are equal, okay, or that there's no difference between um, the mean of the two groups. And then the alternative, it says, um, the test says perform a test to see if there is a difference in the mean times, okay? So it's not implying do we expect the antibiotic group to take longer or the antibiotic group to take less time, okay? We just said, is there a difference? So in that case, I would say mu1 minus mu2 doesn't equal zero, all right? Okay. The keyword was, is there a difference? If it said, does antibiotic take longer, antibiotic group take longer, then we would have a directional one, and it would be mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero, okay? Null hypothesis would be the same, okay? Null hypothesis is the same whether it's directional or not directional, okay? And then if the other one said, does control group take longer? Okay, in that case, it would be mu1 minus mu2 less than zero, okay? Assuming this is group one and that's group two. You double that one? Uh, no, no. See, you guys are you guys are skipping steps. Okay. We would um, test directionality. You have to check 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 directionality. Okay. And in this one, what what's the case? Directionality doesn't work, right? Because if our data shows that if anything that the control group takes less time. Okay. So if this were our alternative, directionality doesn't work, okay, there's no sense in even going on, okay? So you wouldn't say take this, I mean, whatever, you, you wouldn't say take that number and divide by two, okay? The top one, directionality checks out, go on with the test. So, so don't, don't make that mistake. Okay. All right, and then over here, okay, so uh, you get your, um, so this is our null and our alternative. Our test statistic is um, what we observed minus what we expected divided by the standard error. So my standard error is I just do 24.6 squared over, oh, no, 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 using all the wrong numbers. <laughs> 
hand, I get a test statistic of 1.202. Alright, how many degrees of freedom do I have in this example? Okay, so the truth is it's some complicated formula, but we use the approximation n1 plus n2 minus 2, and that gives us 30 degrees of freedom. And with 30 degrees of freedom, I look this up in the, uh, the t table, and it, my test statistic of 1.202 and 30 degrees of freedom is in between, uh, so my tail area is in between 0 0.10 and 0 0.20, okay, with 30 degrees of freedom. Okay, so because I have a non-directional alternative, my p-value, was the, the top one, okay, I'm expecting the antibiotic group to take longer, then this would be my p-value, and if I have this, then I would say certainly no evidence to support the alternative. Another one? No, linear. Oh, the linear regression. Yeah. We didn't do that one. Okay. Uh, what, what do you want to see for linear regression? I guess the question I have is when um, on the homework, when you were working on the problem, you didn't do the linear regression. Oh, I did? I didn't mean to. Um, I didn't mean to. Oh, where, the way I calculated R. Okay. I think it's the same way the book does it. I just probably used maybe a shortcut in there. Um, so 1222? Is that, that first one there? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I will do this. 1222. We got um, 6, 1, 3, 2, 5. And 6. Seven, three, two, 14. Okay, so step one is you should make a scatter plot first, okay? But I can't uh, put a scatter plot on a scantron, so I'll we'll just say this linear regression, whatever makes sense. Okay. Uh, so now I have the mean, 3.4, this is uh, my mean, my x bar, and my y bar is 6.4, and the standard deviation is 2.1 here, and over here it's 4.7. Okay, so the formula for r is 1 over n minus 1 times the sum product of z scores. Okay, that's that's one way to get it. Um, this can be uh, rewritten uh, to x minus x bar over standard deviation of x. That's the z score of x, and this is y minus y bar divided by the standard deviation of y. That's the z score for y. Okay, and uh, what I like to do to make my life a little bit easier. Rather than trying to divide by the standard deviation of x for every single point and the standard deviation of y for every single point, because it's going to be the same for all of them, I can factor this out and just do it once at the very end. So that's what I'm doing here. So this, I probably, this part probably is different from the way the book does it. 
because I think the book divides by the standard deviation of x for every single point and divides by the standard deviation of y for every single point. And that's fine. You'll get the same exact answer, and it will be correct. It's just that's rather tedious. So I just I like to do this and just do the division once all the way at the very end. That's, that's the only difference that I'm doing. The answer, the answer will be, be exactly the same. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm going to do x minus x bar and then y minus y bar. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply those two together. So I do 6 minus 3.4, 2.6, 1 minus 3.4, negative 2.4, negative 0.4. So I'm just doing this for all of these. This, this is the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar, right? Each of these is x bar, x minus x bar times y minus y bar, and this is what happens when you add them all up. And then now I divide, I now I multiply this, right? I do n minus 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I do 4. said, is it significant? Is, is that, was that even a problem? Oh uh, yeah, it says test to see if it's significant. Alright, so there you would get a test statistic, a t-score, and it's given by this thing. that up in your t table with degrees of freedom equal to um, three, n minus 2. So you have 3 degrees of freedom. You look that up, you get a non-significant p-value. So this is not evidence that there is correlation between x and y. Right? So does that mean we have evidence that there's no correlation? No. We don't say we have evidence that there's no correlation. We say we do not have evidence that there is correlation. Okay. So if my p-value is, what, 30%, what does that p-value mean? It means the probability of yeah, okay, so observing my data would mean the probability that 
uh, some random points will create a correlation of 0.4357 uh, is 30% even if there was no correlation between x and y at all. Okay. So if I throw five points at a dartboard, I've got about a, like a 30% chance that those five points will have a correlation of 0.4357. Okay. Even though it's just random points from a dartboard because they've got terrible aim, so it's, there's no there's no uh, correlation going on there. Okay. It's just random points on a dartboard. If you throw five points, you still got a you got a 30% or whatever your p-value chance of getting a correlation of 0.4357. Yes. Um, I have a question, and it is kind of in relation to that. On the this most recent one, the first problem um, is kind of the only one that I didn't really understand. Okay, which one was the first? And it problem? was just um, labeling. It was it was. Uh, labeling which chart? Like, yeah, like the, the yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, and the answers gave like 